Hello, and welcome to the Northern Ohio Research and Training Technology Hub's Innovators in Education broadcast. We made it to episode two. The Innovators in Education series is brought to you by a generous donation from the Nord Family Foundation and in cooperation with the Educational Service Center of Lorain County. I'm your host, Mike Triska, and at the controls is our Director of Innovation and Technology, Dave Miller. This year, we will focus on innovators in education that are impacting teaching and learning um, with a focus on blended learning, computer science, coding, and gamification. In addition to a slightly different focus than last year, we are also reaching out to a much broader audi audience using a new technology called Talk Show. We can connect to anyone, anywhere, via Skype. Here's Dave with some additional information about contributing questions to today's broadcast. All right, well, thanks, Mike. Uh, that was a great intro, and we're excited to be here today with Tyler Waller, who's going to talk to us about how to gamify our classrooms. Um, before we get to that, though, just a couple of things uh, I wanted to mention. Even though this is a live stream, we will have uh, ways for you to participate via today's Meet and Twitter. So if you are a person that prefers Twitter, you're going to post your questions throughout. Oh, and there went my computer on the screen. Hopefully it comes back, but we'll get it back. You're going to use Twitter and use the hashtag North, N-O-R-T-2-H. And Today's Meet, if you'd rather use Today's Meet, that's going to be todaysmeet.com forward slash north. So Today's Meet forward slash north and Twitter. And Mike, we had some incentives today, right, for people to, to be a part. And Definitely. So if you're, yeah, if you're part of this broadcast, you're in for a treat. Yep. So what we're going to do today, for those of you that tweet or post questions on today's meet, Tyler has worked with the Classcraft company, and they're going to give away two premium memberships for us today. So make sure you post some questions up there. I'm going to throw it back to Mike and Tyler. Here we go. All right. So today's topic is gamification. So did, did you lose the slides over there, Dave? Yeah. Let, give me just a All right. second. Well, go I'll ahead and, and try to work on those. So. Like we said, it's gamification, it's 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 Minecraft, World of Warcraft, Angry Birds, or even I'll throw it way back to where in the world is Carmen San Diego. Gaming is a hit with the majority of students and teachers. Um, I actually had some really cool data that we're trying to get up there. Um, the first bit of data is not that cool. 1.2 uh, million students in the United States fail to graduate from high school each year. Now this is where it gets interesting, yet 28 million people harvest their crops on Farmville every day. And then five million play an average of 48 or 45 hours a week of games, uh, which I mean, we've got three billion hours a week worth of gaming. So clearly gaming is something that is interesting to many people, not just students. Go ahead and flip to the slide two, Dave. I like this slide right in the middle, very small. It says uh, definition for gamification. Very simply, it's just using gaming elements in a non-gaming way. So for example, students might advance a level for doing something like working their way through the writing process. Or they may, um, students may partake in a battle um, as a way to formally assess their class. Um, and at the very end, I pulled this from Forbes Online in February. Um, <laughs> Dave could get that up there. Uh, I'll read it to you though. The quote that I thought was really powerful is, the key to gamification of education is not to privilege one over the other, but to find the sweet spot between pedagogy and engagement where learning intersects with fun. I thought that was a nice quote to start things off. So what we're going to do, we're going to learn more about gamification. We're going to travel all the way down to the Ohio, Kentucky, and West Virginia border to meet Tyler Waller, who is gamifying his classroom with a product called Classcraft. For those who are not familiar with Classcraft, it's been described as Class Dojo on steroids, or Class Dojo meets World of Warcraft. Um, good afternoon, Tyler. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. All right, great. Uh, before we discuss gamification, Tyler, uh, and Classcraft, uh, tell us a little bit about your teaching experience and your school district. Uh, I teach at a school district called Dawson Bryant uh, Local Schools. So it's at the, like as you said, the very most southern tip of Ohio here, right uh, where uh, it meets Kentucky and West Virginia. Uh, we service about uh, 350 students from 9th to 12th grades uh, in the high school here where I teach. Uh, this is uh, ending up my eighth year as a computer networking, computer repair, and video and sound instructor uh, here at the high school. And um, yeah, I started out, uh, went to Marshall University to actually be a computer engineer. 
uh, and ended up teaching, and I, I haven't left since. That's a great. And we can see your classroom behind you. We were talking about it a little bit earlier. It just looks awesome. Looks like a great facility. Uh, looks like the students have a lot of room to create and just uh, really go with whatever task they have in front of them. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, my classroom is definitely the, one of the, actually the biggest classroom in the, in the school except for the uh, gymnasium. Uh, it was designed initially to be the uh, actual shop class, um, and I don't know why uh, you know why, why they changed that. That was back way back when I was in high school, actually. But there was never uh, a tool one put in this room, and it's been a technology lab ever since. Uh, we started out teaching uh, the Cisco Academy, and have now uh, progressed into teaching the CompTIA A plus and M plus certifications. All right, very good. All right, so let's jump in the um, gamification a little bit. First of all, why did you decide to gamify your classroom? Um, well, to be honest with you, uh, I consider myself a gamer. It's not, you know, it's something, when I call myself a gamer, it's not like the students now, you know, like you were talking about spending, um, you know, 10 to 20 hours a week gaming. Um, you know, I've, I've been there and done that, but you know, don't have time for it anymore. And, you know, I've played all these RPGs, the role-playing games, World of Warcraft and stuff, and I, you know, I enjoyed that stuff. Um, and the students that basically are in my classroom are, you know, technology students anyway, so I, I feel like that. You know, at the, at the beginning of things, I, I decided that, you know, it may be a way to bring some of the students in and give them maybe a purpose for being in, in here as opposed to just, you know, having to be here and learning. It gives them a purpose to actually um, to want to learn the material as opposed, you know, as opposed to just having to soak it up. All right. And you chose Classcraft as the platform for gamifying your classroom. Why did you choose Classcraft and, and how did your relationship uh, develop with them? Um, actually... Classcraft, I was, um, as I mentioned earlier when we talked, um, it was just one of those deals where it was right place, right, th right time. I was looking on Google uh, for platforms to gamify Classroom, and I, I came across Classcraft, and it was basically in the beta stages at that point. Um, I started looking around. I actually had one of my senior classes take part in the, in the program for a while. Uh, the last nine weeks of school, and we kind of done it um, on a trial basis. I, you know, the reason I I had them to do it was because they had already certified and we pretty much had I'd completed everything that I wanted to complete with them. Um, so once they get certified, you know, there's not much, that's kind of like the culmination of their senior year for me. So uh, we started looking at it and then, you know, as the game progressed, they started adding new material and new things to the, the game platform. Uh, and my students there that were, you know, getting ready to graduate as seniors were, you know, taken back. They wished that they were freshmen again because they could actually, you know, come back and, and um, you know, be part of the Classcraft experience all the way through high school. Um, started using it, I liked it for a while, and then the next year I looked at this, I seen that they're actually, in, you know, they still are looking for ambassadors for the program. Uh, just people that believe in the program and know how to use it and want to uh, share the platform as I'm doing here. Uh, submit an application, uh, and then, um, you know, a couple weeks later, here I am, an ambassador for Classcraft. That's great. And, you know, we as we go and we work with our member schools, we see um, a lot of people are interested in it, definitely, but really you know just having that time to dive into it and start exploring it sounds like you really approached it a great way you had your, your students really do a lot of the work and see what worked for them so that's awesome um, so what we want to do is give our audience a chance to see what Classcraft is all about so we're going to turn the controls over to you Tyler and you can kind of walk us through the dashboard and explain some of the features that are involved in this uh, platform okay sure no problem um, you know here when you know uh, Classcraft platform pretty much works on any uh, any browser, um, Internet Explorer, Chrome, Firefox. Um, it also uh, is going to work for um, Safari and stuff like that. I, there's some, obviously, that some of the non really no, uh, are, uh, known browsers may have a problem, but so far uh, they've actually uh, had a lot of fail safes and stuff. So it, um, you know, it's up 99.9% .9 of the time. That's one of the, the key things that I wanted to look at you know is it going to be one of those deals where it's it's down a couple days a, a week or if it's going to be down a couple days a month or you know even if down a couple days a year even affects you and and so far that hasn't happened they've done an awesome job there um but when you very first log in to the game platform here you're going to be um you know basically faced with this you're going to see um a class that you've chosen uh in this uh case here i've chosen just a sample class with some uh animate uh people here uh, for confidentiality reasons. But on the left-hand side here, as you can see where I'm uh, actually highlighting down through here, these are going to be the, um, the students that you have in class. And eat. as you begin in Classcraft, you uh, basically you're going to talk to your students about what Classcraft is, um, you know, basically telling them that you're gonna give them a character 
uh, for your class, and that character is going to represent them throughout the rem the entirety of the class. Um, and this character, you know, has consequences and repercussions. It also has uh, a lot of good things associated with them. You know, it just depends on how they interact in your classroom and, and as you, you as a teacher, how you want to basically shape this thing around your use. Uh, um, one of the main questions that's, that people ask me is, you know, what is the age range of students that you can use Classcraft with? And my answer to them always is um, where, you know, that you can basically shape Classcraft any way that you would like um, for you, your needs. So, I mean, you could use it all the way down into elementary school very easily. Um, some of the stuff that you're going to use here as you get in, uh, you know, middle school and high school that you're you're not going to use there. Uh, but you can definitely shape this for your own. Let me let me um, jump but, in there real quick, Tyler. Um, I'm glad you said that. Actually, we had a, a question on one of our um, our Google groups this week, and it was about you know what uh, what grade levels to use Classcraft. And someone did mention yes, they could use it during uh, with K through five students. Um, so with that said, how much interaction do your students actually have? logging in and updating or viewing um, their profiles? Um, my students do it every day. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that they have to do constantly. Um, it's something that the teacher can take care of, um, you know, later on in, in the class period if they like, or, you know, I'm in a tech lab, so I have, I have 35 computers in here that students are on all the time, so it's simple for me. Um, you know, I don't know if your school district uh, allows it as far as with, um, you know, mobile devices. So there is an app for Android and um, iPhone or iDevices as well. So uh, students can download that and interact with their character just the same as they would if they were on a PC um, from their iDevices. Um, stuff that they can actually, uh, kind of, you know, get uh, connected to at home as well. It doesn't have to be at school. Um, but as far as like if you're if you're going to, you know, make it down into you know K5, um, it's not necessarily something that you would have to have them log in and interact with. It's going to be something that you could use for. Uh, you know, basically like a reward system mm -hmm. where you can have everybody have a character. Um, and, you know, let's see if I um, click on this here really quick, bring it up here. Um, you can see here that it, there's, um, you know, we'll talk about XP and stuff in just a second, but you can add uh, basic stuff here. Uh, for example, like finding a mistake in class notes, you may change that to, you know, you know, being able to tie your shoe yeah. one week. Uh, you, and you can add experience points. And as there's, you know, the kids see their character gaining more experience it's going to cause them to level up and you know again this this thing is so um you know it's basically putty in your hand you basically can make it um as you know molded to your classroom experience as you possibly you know could ever imagine um there are some things that you can't change but as far as watering it down to where you could use it even in those small uh in the lower uh, grade know, levels well yeah in the lower grade levels would, would definitely be uh feasible all right that's great all right, so jump into, uh, you said you were going to talk about the HP. We saw that on the screen. All the different ways that your students can earn points. Um, and we even got to see a little bit of um, how you can customize those behaviors. But how do they earn points, lose points? What is HP, XP, and all the other point systems available there? OK, sure, no problem. Um, as you can see here underneath uh, Natasha here, um, on the, right here, there's uh, three different, or actually four different color uh, bars here. One, the top one is HP, which is health points. Uh, it's basically like the, the remainder of life that your character has left um, in, you know, for that entire, for that person's character. AP is action points, which is basically like the, what it costs to use your powers. Um, and I'll show you, you know, some powers cost more than others. If you don't have enough AP to use that power, then uh, you cannot use that power, obviously. Uh, you gain AP back every day. Um, you as the teacher can go in there and set it up to change the amount of um of ap that's that's generated every day um, you can actually make it to where it's there's zero generated if you like uh the next one down is xp which is basically experience points that's how much um you know of a level the character has uh, for every you can set this up as well as for a student or for a teacher as well i have mine set at the default which is 1000 experience for every 1000 experience a character levels up you can see here that Natasha here is actually a level five mage. Um, and if you see here, if I would just uh, go into the uh, XP thing here and I would just add 1000 XP. That's awesome. Hey, while you're on that screen, uh, actually let's, let's take care of two things. Um, the sun is actually out in Ohio and we can barely see you when we, when we have you on the Skype screen. Um, are you able to turn your, uh, yep, your give screen me. a little bit? And then okay. while you're on the screen, there you go, we see your green screen studio, awesome. 
Yeah, let's see if I can go this way here. It's a little, little uh -huh. up. See the sun, it's playing tricks on us. There, there you go. That looks yeah, better. Yeah, uh, that's that's the uh, the thing about this classroom. Those uh, those blinds are actually uh, about uh, I'd say 25 feet in the air. <laughs> uh, so uh, I don't understand why there's blinds up there, but uh, they are there. And that's <laughs> stuff you want to do. All right, so you have the XP up there, and if you, would, um, I know the audience can read that, but if you share some of the the behaviors that you highlight in your class. Okay, uh, some of these, again, these are not my classes, this is the default. Okay. Uh, some of them that are on there by default are finding a mistake uh, in class notes, correctly, an correctly answering a question in class, which is something that I do use. Um, uh, helping another student with his or her classwork, being positive and hardworking in class. Each one of those are set up by default by presets. You can, at the bottom of that list there, if you can see it, it says new XP preset. You can, and it's something that you use on a daily basis or weekly basis that you want to use up there all the time. Instead of having to type in a custom value at the right all the time, you can just type in how much uh, XP that you want on the left-hand side, type a description, hit the little green check mark, and it automatically puts it into the XP um, preset there. So you can actually um, just click on it when you want to, uh, when you want to add that. Um, and with the experience there, again, experience is, uh, you know, basically uh, allows their character level up, to level up. Uh, again, every 1,000, uh, it's set up by default uh, to um, level them up automatically. Again, if we go back to this first screen here, you can see here that, again, Natasha, again, is a level 5 mage. Um, she has 5,041 experience. Should she break the 6,000 um, level there, she would break into the 6th. Uh, level for mage. Um, so just below XP there on that list, you see GP, which is uh, gold points. Um, it's basically like money on there. Um, the GP students gain that as they level up. Also, if you're on the premium version of Classcraft, you can um, you know give and take away GP as you see fit. Um, that's one of the um, the things that isn't available in the free version, um, but that's basically one of the only things that I've seen that I use on a daily basis or a weekly basis that wouldn't be available. Um, and GP, the only thing it basically does right now is allow students to equip their character to look differently. Um, they can train pets and stuff with it. Um, but as at this time right now, none of that has any effect on gameplay. It just makes their character look different. Okay. Hey, um, you mentioned that yeah, those were the default ones we saw. So what are some of the custom ones that you use? What are your favorites? Uh, let's see, um, I have one that students really enjoy and it seems to help out in other classes. Uh, I give them 100 experience points. Uh, if they, they bring in a 100% on a quiz or an exam for another from another class. Um, so I find students trying harder and trying to get hundreds in other classes other than my class and then they come in and the only thing they have to do is show me a piece of paper uh, and they gain experience in Classcraft in my class. Um, you know, which doesn't really affect anything as far as me teaching or, um, you know, it doesn't give them an advantage in my class. It just allows them to level their character up faster, um, which kind of does give them an advantage, but they, you know, they, they see it as being way more, uh, you know, of an advantage than it really is. All right, very good. All right, I'll let you go through some more of that. I know uh, some things that we talked about before, random events around there, the Wheel of Destiny. And uh, definitely we want to see, uh, see something about the, the boss battles um, we yep. mentioned before in a pre-interview. So if you'd share that with us, I think those are the areas that really stick out the most. Uh, I'm, sh I'm sure you can highlight some more too, though. But those are there's some really strong areas. Hey, Mike, and uh, I, I want to make sure we encourage our audience to ask questions throughout. So Hillary has asked a question, and, and I know you're probably going to cover this, but I want more questions to come in, too. So Hillary's question is, are there any costs associated with Classcraft? If you could make sure you address that at some point, too. All right. Sure, no problem. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, talk about that really quickly before we get into it. Classcraft is, is totally free if you want to use the free version of it. Uh, you can get on there and use it. Um, it's totally free. Uh, there is a premium version of it, which is, it costs $10 per class per year plus $1 a student. So let's just say that you have a class of 30 students that you want to use Classcraft Premium with. It's going to cost you uh, $30, $30 for the $1 per student and then $10 for the class. So you're going to be looking at $40 for the entire year. Um, so, but again, that's um, pretty much up to you. Uh, if you want to use the premium version, we'll talk about some more different things in there. But the free version, guys, works um, you know works amazingly. So it, it is something if you want to just try it out and see if it works for you. You can definitely get on the free version and try it out. And if you think it's something that you want to uh, to pursue and get into the premium version, um, again, it's ten bucks a 
class, uh, $10 per class, and then $1 per student to get everybody uh, logged in as a premium account. All right, that's very reasonable. Uh, yeah, it's it's very very reasonable. That's one of the things that I chose. And one other, another reason that uh, I chose Classcraft over other stuff because it's a lot cheaper and it works better in my opinion. Right. So uh, you talked about uh, the random events there, mm -hmm. um, and one of the random the random events is uh, you know basically on the left hand side here. Um, what random events are there are uh, you know uh, there's 80. Uh, by default that are on there loaded um, and when the students come in you do a random event um, some of these are good some of them are bad you can actually when I say bad they could be detrimental to the character's health mm -hmm. on uh, Classcraft or whatever uh, but um, you know you can actually go in and change all 80 of these if you want you can get rid of all 80 of them you can add more I mean I, I don't think there's a limited uh, number here I think you can pretty much add as many as you would like um, I, I think I have I have one for at least like at least one for every day of the, of the class, mm -hmm. usually about 180, 690. That way, you know, something that every day doesn't actually happen. Sometimes I double them up if I like them. Um, but, you know, what happens is you just click on the, um, the random event uh, generator here. Uh, and as you generate um, the um, random event, there we go. Um, something happens, for example, in uh, Western Spaghetti Quiz here. Clint Eastwood is testing you. A random player must name three Spaghetti Western movies, gaining 75 experience points for each correct answer. So what this is going to do, and again, this can be something that you change. Obviously, this is not going to be something that you're going to ask a, a middle school or something like that, but my high school will get a, get a kick out of it. But, um, you know, one random player generated by the game is going to have to name three of these Spaghetti Western movies. Um, and each one that they can name gains them 75 experience points, which will allow them, you know, to basically level their character up. Um, but the little green um, icon that you see there on the bottom, uh, that actually takes you to what you were talking about a second ago, the Wheel of Destiny. So I'll click on that. And the Wheel of Destiny, what it does, it allows you as a teacher to pick either random players or random teams um, for either, you know, to ask questions or for, for this instance, for somebody who's going to have to answer this question. So when I click player here, it randomly generates a character. Uh, so Tyrone um, Muller here would be the person that would actually be in charge of answering those three uh, Spaghetti Western do you, questions there. Do you begin each class this way? Is this, is this like the very first thing they do or is this just, does this come up during the day at a, a special time? How does this work? Um, it's the very first thing I do in class. It's probably going to be the very first thing that you would, you would want to do in class because a lot of the stuff, uh, there's some on there that I really enjoy, like some of them that um, say like for the remainder of the class, one random team can't, uh, cannot communicate with each other mm -hmm. other than like writing it on a piece of paper or hand signals or something that ah, they're basically gotcha. mute for the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, getting that towards the end of the class is not going to be as helpful as the beginning of it. And again, if that stuff doesn't fit your classroom um, and you don't think that that's good, you know, going to fit your classroom at all, you could definitely take that out and put new stuff in. Um, but and again, let's just say that uh, Tyrone here was actually to, uh, he was able to um, answer that correctly. Um, so let's just say he answered, um, you know, two of them. You can actually type in the value here of 150. And then, um, you know, hit the green check mark there. And you can see that um, Tyrone actually got the, uh, Seeing his experience here, he leveled, he gained 150 experience there, so he's a little closer to leveling up there. Um, one thing about since we're in the Will of Destiny here, if you're, you're uh, I use Will of Destiny a lot of times to pick and choose students throughout my classroom to answer uh, review questions or, um, you know, boss battles and stuff, which we'll get into in a second. Uh, but what you notice on the right hand side is that it says one of 24 players. That means that, that you know, it's chosen one of 24 players. Um, so every time you hit that button, it actually randomly generates another person. It cannot randomly generate the, anybody that's already been picked until everybody has been picked in the classroom. So nice. every, all, of my stu all of my students know that they're actually, you know, have a chance to be called on at any time during the classroom uh, class period. So, you know, it, it calls my students to basically, you know, make sure they're paying attention more often than not because uh, they never know when their name's gonna be called. And it's not just me. It takes the blame basically off the teacher saying, hey, you know, little Johnny says, hey, you're, you're picking on me. You're calling on me several times. It's like, no, really, it's the game. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, randomly generates everybody. And once your name's called, you're good until everybody answers the question. Mm -hmm. And now, so, I mean, you have a great way to get people to respond in class. You have a great way to um, customize behaviors that you want to see. Um, 
and you talked a little bit about collaboration, but you're going to talk about the battle boss, um, which is a great formative assessment tool. So, I mean, this really hits so many different levels of teaching that, I mean, we're talking, you know, the big topic is OTES and, and the teacher performance rubric. Um, I mean, you could go through there and kind of tie different parts of Classcraft to all the different parts that, well, not all, but several different parts of that performance rubric, which is pretty awesome. Yep, you're definitely correct. Um, and you mentioned uh, boss battles there. I'll show you what that is. Uh, um, and again, here on the left-hand side, uh, we'll just talk about this menu really quickly okay. then we'll go through there. The top, top one takes you to home. Um, this here is the basically the, um, the dashboard. Uh, the game dashboard takes you back to show uh, all the students. Uh, right above that on the game dashboard, you can see here that you can click on this, which shows all the students in order. You can also click the, the middle thing here, which actually shows you um, shows you um, teams. Oh. Um, so you can see here that we have uh, the annoying cobras, uh, glamorous rhinoceroses, and such. Um, I allow my students to uh, pick their own team names. Their crest on the left-hand side, there's about, uh, I think, eight that they can choose from. I let them choose that. Um, and one thing that I forgot to mention is that once you come in with a student, um, they have to um, make a choice whether they want to be a mage, a warrior, or a healer. Um, all three of those factions actually have different starting HPs. Some of them have more than others. Uh, basically what a healer does, you know, self-explanatory, it allows you to heal other people on your team. Um, mages, they actually allow to, they basically fill up their other teammates AP. So their action points, what they use to, to use their powers. Uh, you, you rely on mages to keep that full for you every week. Uh, and then uh, a warrior is somebody that can protect you um, should something uh, negative happen to you. For example, like one of the th things that negatively affects my students is coming in late. Uh, and if I were, I'll just click on um, back over here to the first thing here. And um, on the uh, very first screen here with Natasha, down here at the bottom, uh, underneath the bars we were just talking about, you can see different color coded um, buttons. Uh, the red one for HP, um, the, I guess you would call it a, an orange uh, for XP. Uh, GP is gold, and notice there's no AP button there. You actually have to click on the, uh, the black and white button there that will allow you to add or subtract any of those. Um, but let's just say that I click on the, the red button here that shows me that I'm allowed to remove HP from a student. Mm -hmm. uh, here are some uh, HP presets that are set up, negative five for disturbing class, but one that I use you know, a lot is arriving late to class. Um, I have some students that travel a pretty good way is to get to my classroom and if they're a minute late that's understandable if they're five minutes late they know that they're going to get dinged 10 hp uh, in classcraft and again which really doesn't affect them that much but once you get down into the lower uh, distribution of hp you're going to have to either require you know be really hoping that you have uh, some decent healers or have healers <laughs> on your team that's going to be able to do that to heal you or when you get down in there if you were to fall to zero in hp um, that's what you, actually what's known as falling in battle in Classcraft, and there are negative effects for doing that. You can set that up to be however you want. Um, for example, detention, um, which I've, I've kind of taken out because there's sometimes that there's chances in this game that, that you could fall in battle just because somebody on your team uh, is doing poorly. Uh, so I didn't want those students to be, um, you know, going to detention and stuff uh, for that because really it's nothing they've done. I like to put stuff on here that. Uh, that basically it doesn't really embarrass them but it's stuff that they don't want to do for example like taking the next uh, exam in the principal's office mm -hmm. uh, so you know and i have that worked out with him so you know he knows it's all fun you know it's all fun and and but they they basically don't you know they're they take it very seriously so if um you know they say that sh she was arrived late for class you can see this next uh uh window that comes up and it shows you the actual um stuff that her teammates can actually help her do uh, for example uh, trula can actually use protect one and so can julio there so if we were to click on one of these these are students on our team that have learned these powers for example this is actually a warrior here um, so she could use protect one which is going to basically take some of the damage from her basically like using herself as a human shield uh, but they lose h or the ap here you can see it costs 10 ap mm -hmm. to actually use that power but the reason that it's Good for the student to do that one their 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 teammates not falling in battle but two they're gaining 50 experience points for doing that so they're basically getting rewarded for basically blocking that attack
Tyler, uh, question here. We've got someone on today's meet, and uh, this was Sean that posted this. By the way, Sean, uh, for that drawing, if you could repost, and if other people are using today's meet, make sure you post with your email address or a phone number so we can uh, get a hold of you if you're the person that wins the drawing. But his question was, how do parents respond to the use of Classcraft? Um, well, that's um, you know funny you should mention that. I'm glad you did because there is now a new um, part of Classcraft that back, basically allows you to um, bring the parents into this game and basically they can follow along their, with their student, uh, their child through Classcraft. Uh, they can download an app or get online and basically they have a parent access code so they can get on there and watch their student, uh, watch them level up, see if they're getting you know like any HP taken away for uh, arriving late to class or they can see if there's any, um, any anything posted in the classroom content section that the student needs to turn in. They can basically uh, be a part of this classroom, you know, behind the scenes. Um, some of my students' uh, parents are, uh, you, know, you know, very, very receptive. I've had zero students' parents come in and say that they weren't, you know, happy with it. And that's the thing, like, I use this as a, as a tool and it's not mandatory. My students are, are given the opportunity at the beginning to say, hey, I want to opt out of Classcraft. Uh, and I actually, as we mentioned before and we talked before, I've, I've had one student actually, um, you know, opt out. Um, but as he's seen the game progress, he was actually wanting to play within the first week. So he kind of uh, went back on himself. And, and since then, you know, I haven't had anybody, you know, have any kind of issues with it. Um, and especially since this, this new parent app has come out, parents can actually see this, they can get uh, access to it. Uh, one thing that I have done in the this year and it's been a huge hit uh, is I've been telling my students that if they bring their parents or guardians into parent teacher conference nights um, that I will give them an entire level on classroom so basically it's worth a thousand experience well and again at at the you know end all of it you realize that it has no effect on you uh, as a teacher it, it costs you nothing um, but my uh, parent teacher conference uh, numbers have went up probably 70 percent this year um, I've had I've had teachers or uh, students parents come in and it's like you know they drug them in here <laughs> and she was like you know I have parents say you know we're just here because he wants to get the experience in classroom which you know if that works hey, hey, so be yeah it. whatever but, it takes it, to get uh, parents in that's yeah, awesome very cool yeah so that's definitely something that's definitely working really well with me all right let's jump to the boss battle because I think a lot of people want to see that formative assessment piece because that's always really a nice feature of the spotlight. Okay, um, not make sure that I don't know that there's any. Uh, we'll see here, but, but you know, under quests here on the left hand side, uh, the midways mm -hmm. here, there's three different quests. Uh, they're going to be adding more as, as you can see on the right hand, some more to come. Uh, the adventures in the wild there, the boss battles, what we're just what we're talking about. The next one to the right, the White Mountain Trek, that's nothing more than a countdown. If you want the students to see like a five minute countdown on a smart board or something, you can use that. Um, forest run, which is a stopwatch, basically just see if you want to time students. But there on the far left, Adventures in the Wild. We'll click on that and hopefully there isn't any in here. So let me uh, just a second uh, create something here really quickly. Um, you get to choose um, the name of the boss. You get to ch choose which boss that they want to, you want them to uh, basically, uh, you know, battle you type in an, an hp value for uh let's make that really small so we can make it very easily there so i put a 10 um i usually do 100 uh depends on you know how what you're using there or what um you want it to be um so i'm going to choose a little green check mark there at the bottom uh now you notice that we've went over to the questions box there this is where you can add new questions i'll just add a you know a really quick question here um I thought right, you said so, a really, uh, oh, a real quick question, not a really easy question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one thing you have to do here is you have uh, basically a short text if you want just to, like a fill in the blank type question. Uh, there, there is a multiple choice here. One thing I'm working on that we haven't, uh, they haven't fixed yet and it may be something that cannot be done, but in multiple choice, you have to choose one answer. Um, I would work, try to work into where you can choose multiple. Um, you know, like if you like choose all that apply, mm -hmm. 
uh, type deal. Uh, right now, it's basically only um, you know choose one. If you want to choose all the apply, or ch or choose all that apply. You basically you know, reverse engineer that. You know which one of these do not apply. Mm -hmm. Type deal. Um, so I just put in short text here. Um, type in an answer here, and then and then on the left hand side, you'll see that it actually gives you the question, and you give that an exp an amount of um, basically power, uh, mm -hmm. let's say, you know, battle HP. So if they got that right, let's just say that we'll just make this um, 10 just, uh, actually, let's make this 10 will work. But as you notice down here at the bottom, that you basically want more mm -hmm. um, questions yeah, than because we what, made our boss 10 points to defeat, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you have some students that are getting these questions wrong, you want to basically give them the opportunity to still beat the, the boss in the end. Um, so it, it's definitely, you know, I usually go um, five or six more questions than I need. So let's see if I can uh, find the cursor here. So I've created this boss battle here. Now you actually assign a reward for defeating the boss, um, experience points. I usually do um, 100 experience. It depends. If it's a harder test or a harder quiz, I may do more. Um, and let's just say that we'll just do 20 GP. Uh, and then I will um, definitely see, I'll accept it right there. All right, so now that I have this uh, created here, I can actually select the boss and then go to next. And this gives you the opportunity to hit students as a whole, the whole group, um, individual students, like you ask questions to individual students, or you can put the people together in teams and, and then basically just ask, the, the, you know, it randomly generates teams as opposed to students. So we'll just uh, choose students here, uh, and then we'll start the battle. Um, this will allow me, and again, you have more than one question on, on more than uh, normally, but we're just going to use one question now. So it's saying that now we're going to uh, basically uh, battle um, the purple grumbler today uh, with random students. So it's going to randomly generate gen uh, single students in the classroom as opposed to teams. Uh, so I hit the, um, the check mark there. So the first one comes up, question one. Uh, and Lucas is actually the unlucky one that got chosen there. Uh, he sees the question here as two plus two. They have the opportunity to answer that question. Uh, let's just say that uh, Lucas doesn't get the question correct. We hit the green arrow here, and it, the check mark, sorry. And it gives you two options here. The correct answer is four. If he gets it correct, you're gonna click on the little green arrow or the check mark. If he gets it incorrect, you're gonna click on the black X. Let's just say that he does get it correct because I only put one question in there. Uh, so he did get it correct. Um, it shows here um, that they did defeat the boss and they did get a, uh, the victory here. However, one thing you notice is it says flawless. Uh, if a student or teams uh, defeat the boss without missing any questions, it doubles the XP and GP reward. Um, so they get earned 200 experience as a class, not just that one person, uh, plus 40 experience as a class. Um, the cool thing about this is it's randomly generated, but it does have the opportunity uh, for them, their attack to miss. They could still get the question correct, but their attack could miss the boss, which doesn't take any HP away from the boss. Um, obviously, to beat the boss, you have to take him all the way down to zero HP. Um, if a student misses a question or a team misses a question, whatever that question was worth, let's just say that one was worth 10 points, it actually takes that damage away from those students or um, that entire team. Um, so if they missed that question, um, it's basically like the boss attacked them uh, and they, lo they lose that amount of HP. So let's just say a student, uh, you know, misses a question and it was worth 10 uh, experience points. It's going to take their entire team down, um, you know, mm -hmm. that amount of, of XP. Uh, or if it's just one student, it'll just be them. Let me ask you this while I'm thinking of it, because um, you're, you're bringing up, you know, kids uh, or teams winning points. What kind of data does this uh, generate? Um, not just the, the formative assessment data, but across the whole platform. Um, right now, that's the that's one of the, uh, the shortcomings of this. Okay. It does have some. It does have some analytics. Um, you know, we can see this here. It shows um, basically um, what they've done throughout the entire thing. They're actually right now working on a lot more. Um, you know, to basically to be able to export this out as a lot more data than it is. Um, you can see if I scroll down here. Um, their GP uh, and how much they have and how much XP and stuff that they've went. Um, but as far as being able to export um, the actual analytics of the uh, the tests and stuff, that is a, a, a down 
fall of the, of the platform right now. Okay. But again, that's something that they're definitely working on, and I'm sure it'll be out before, the, probably before the start of next year, I would imagine. All right, great. Well, let's jump from uh, looking at the platform and looking at the, the actual product itself. And I, I just want to know, and I'm sure a lot of people want to know, um, how, you're, how you are, got it into your classroom? Like, how do you introduce it to your students? Um, is it something that it's, you know, obviously you talked a little bit about it already, but how do you grab their attention with this? What do you do? Um, you know, last last year, actually, one of the random events um, that actually I keep every year now, and it's <laughs> it's pretty crazy, um, is right now it's actually going on at this point, which is, as you can tell, I have a, some, you know, not a huge beard here, but oh, is, Are you going to tell us about the bearded game master? Yeah, All right, yes, go I ahead. I was, I was going to ask you about uh, this. Yeah, my uh, one of my random events for uh, you know I set it up for every class. Um, however, I just allow it to once it uh, happens in one class, um, it can't happen at the same time. Uh, if it does, I just kind of go past it because obviously there's nothing I can do. Uh, but what happens is is on a random event, uh, it generates a random event that I've put on there. It's called the Bearded Game Master. Uh, it's been a super huge hit for me in the past, um, and. We have, uh, what it is, is it's basically, if a student, if, you know, any one student in my entire class gets a 100 on a quiz, all the quizzes are in exams. Like for example, we take a quiz on computer repair tomorrow. If any student in my class get a 100%, then I can't shave, I can't trim my beard uh, until, you know, it, it goes on weeks. Last, last year it went uh, six and a half months wow. before a student um, didn't get a 100 in my classroom, and it was actually a, a student got a 99. So I kind of uh, kind of <laughs> grazed one there. But basically, what it is, you know, uh, the students see me walking around with this big beard, and they know that they have, you know, as men in school as it may be, power over me at that mm -hmm. point. I can't sh I can't trim my beard, which is you know amounts to nothing. Um, but if it, if it's you know helping them out to do good, if one student out of my entire class gets a 100 on the quiz or exam, then I can't I can't my trim my beard. Uh, and last I had you know my administration come around looking at me, and I had this big you know <laughs> six month beard on, and they were like you know what are you what are you doing? But hey, that's you know, a high performing explained, teacher right there. <laughs> yeah, it, as soon as uh, somebody uh, sees what's going on, you know they're like hey carry on. You know if you if you're getting that kind of results, what's the, a little bit of facial hair? Definitely. All right, let me. But I'll go know, ahead. I'm just saying about you know keeping kids interested you know, or you know bringing them in. It's it's pretty self. It's pretty easy mm -hmm. once they see that they have a character within my classroom that basically they can level up. And, and one thing about it that I haven't mentioned is the power is there. There's some powers that, you know, you, you get one power point when you come into the game. And as you level up, um, you know, for example, I get 1,000 experience levels my students up. So every 1,000 they get, they get what's known as power points so they can unlock powers. Uh, these powers may be very minuscule, like uh, being able to arrive two minutes late to class. Um, and use the power for stuff like that. Um, but, you know, seeing the, the students figure out that they're actually part of a team within this classroom and basically they have a, a, a character within this classroom, it draws them in immediately. I haven't, like I said, I've had one student that basically wasn't in, um, you know, involved in the whole thing and said that he didn't want to take part in it, which, you know, I understood. I told him that, you know, I tell all my students that they don't, that, you know, it's not something that's mandatory, it's not going to affect their grade. Uh, but as soon as they see the gameplay and see that um, you know this stuff affects their everyday um, lives, basically in my classroom, um, it's you know it's a it's a no-brainer. Kids want to know what they can do. I have students every day coming in, the first three minutes of class, saying, "Mr. Waller, what's the random event for today? Um, are we going to do a boss battle today?" They know that Classcraft is is a huge part of my classroom, and and they've. They come to love it. That's great. Let me ask you this: What advice do you have for teachers who uh, might want to? It doesn't even have to be class craft. Um, just want to introduce um, gamifying, or they want to start gamifying the classroom. Um, well, obviously, the first, the, the logical answer there is make sure you get um, you know the, the appropriate permission from your administration. I actually talked to a lady that's from a district around my um, district here. Um, within the same county, uh, and she contacted me was super downhearted that she had seen me present at Classcraft in a conference over the summer, uh, and was you know ready to do it and wanted to get it done, and then went and talked to administration, and, and her administration said that it, they didn't feel like that it was uh, you know a, a good fit for their district, which you know again that they they know better and they know best, and it's their district. However, right now uh, that's basically the only district that I've heard of that basically you know nixed it. 
Um, but as far as if, if, you know, I have a lot of people ask me, you know, do you have to be a computer engineer to use this, or do you have to be a computer aficionado? Um, my answer to that is absolutely not. You know, if you can do basics on a computer, if you can check email, if you can, uh, you know, click and drag, if you can hit buttons, uh, and, you know, basically anybody. I, I had a, um, a lady at a presentation I'd done over the summer um, that basically said that she was uh, computer illiterate. Um, she didn't use them as much. She was a, uh, a special ed instructor, and she said, we, you know, I don't use them as often as I should, and I don't have that, um, you know, that skill set. Um, you know, she'd been teaching for 40 plus years and you know, was towards the end of her career. And she's like, I, I don't know that I can actually do this with my students. Um, and she came to my classroom uh, one day for two hours. And, you know, somebody that never touched, you know, Classcraft in their life, uh, she actually uses it today um, and is very proficient with it. That's great. All right. I think that's a great place to wrap things up. Um, thank you, Tyler. You've been great. Uh, you, you really showed us just tons of information that we can take back into our classrooms. Um, and I mean, the product just seems to be um, fantastic. I li really like the way you can add, um, you can customize all those behaviors. Uh, we used uh, Class Dojo with a lot of um, uh, special ed classroom um, ED units. And uh, really, not the focusing on the negative behaviors or taking points away, but really what got those kids was knowing what the positive behaviors were and once they knew what they were and that they could get points for them, I mean, they really took to it. And, and not just in a special education class. I mean, we've seen it work in several classes. So I can see how this would definitely engage the students um, and just make them want to be you know, more part of the team and um, do better on assessments. I mean, there's so many different features that this really hits, so it's awesome. So again, thank you for being part of this. We look forward to hearing more from you in the future. Um, thank you to the Nord Family Foundation for making all this possible with your generous donation and the cooperation of the Educational Service Center of Lorraine. Um, please stay tuned for future broadcasts featuring Code.org's Cody Edmonds, Tom Arnett from the Clayton Christensen Institute, and Vicki Turner who will discuss a new, new course offering in Strongsville called Exploring Computer Science and Math. Uh, we also feature local and superintendents um, as our co-host, which is going to be something new in our next broadcast. So signing off from the North Green Screen Studio, I'm Mike Triska, encouraging you to implement some of these great ideas into your classroom, and most of all, make tech fun. Thanks, Tyler. Thank you, guys.